All right, what's up, class? Welcome back. We're moving on to chapter five. We only have two chapters left, so we don't really have that much left to do um, in terms of chapters, but we're going to kind of look at the progression of the story as we're actually nearing what I would consider the real emotional climax of the story. We've gotten to learn where we are. We've gotten to learn who we're dealing with, and we've gotten to learn the meaning behind all of that, which, is, which are the themes. But now that we're getting that emotional crux, we're seeing how all of that that we have learned about now is affecting the storyline and the people that are in this novel. Um, it's important to look at the fact that we get a good look at different angles and perspectives of all of these different characters. And now that we've reached to that crux, the story kind of, the action, I would say, kind of picks up because they've done all of the groundwork of making us know who is who and what is what and where is where. All right. Now for section five, we're going to start off as usual talking about the setting. And I will start by reading a summary of section five, as usual. Most of the men are outside the barn playing at throwing horseshoes. Only Lenny is in the barn where he has just <clears throat> accidentally killed his pup by stroking it too hard. Curly's wife comes in and starts to flirt with Lenny, who confesses to her his liking for stroking nice things. She invites him to stroke her long, soft hair, but as his stroking becomes harder, she panics. The harder he strokes, the more she panics, and in the end, <clears throat> Lenny accidentally breaks her neck. He half buries her body in the hay and runs off. Candy discovers Curly's wife's body, and informs the rest of the men. Curly is furious and decides to seek revenge, organizing a manhunt to pursue and kill Lenny. Reluctantly, George joins the hunt. Now, we have to also look at the fact that the main setting for the start of this chapter is the barn itself. And we have to also remember where the barn is in regards to the ranch. The barn is where the animals are. And remember in the last chapter we spoke about who the outcasts were, which is Lenny, because of his mind state and his mental disabilities, Curly's wife, because she's a woman, Crooks, because he's black, and Candy, because he's old and basically disabled. So they see him as a little bit useless, right? And what is happening now is... Lenny's now in the barn where he feels a little bit of comfort, which is kind of ironic and it's a little bit of foreshadowing that Lenny feels comfort in a place where animals go. Now, the first quote that I'm going to use um, for setting is obviously the start of the chapter because as we know, Steinbeck starts each chapter by describing his setting. One end of the great barn was piled high with new hay and over the pile hung the four-taloned Jackson Fork suspended from its pulley. The hay came down like a mountain slope to the other end of the barn, and there was a level there was a level place as yet unfilled with the new crop. At the sides the feeding racks were visible, and between the slats the heads of horses could be seen. It was Sunday afternoon, the resting horses nibbled the remaining wisp of hay and they stamped their feet and they bit the wood of the mangers and rattled the halter chains. The afternoon sun sliced in through the cracks of the barn walls and lay in bright lines on the hay. There was a buzz of flies in the air, the lazy afternoon humming. From outside, the clang of horseshoes on the plain peg and the shouts of men playing, encouraging, jeering, but in the barn it was quiet and humming and lazy and warm. So what he's doing, when he's laying the setting, he's not only looking at the physical description, he's looking at the mood, the ambience, the feeling of being in that place. And as we can see, there is an overall tension that is set. There's a little bit of, of thrill that is put to it to kind of get us to prepare our minds for what might come, right? We know that there's some type of climax happening in the story because we're reading a book or reading another story is usually have a turning point. Now... What I like about the description of this now is that it also makes us feel welcome. It makes it, it makes the mood of it a very welcoming one, which I think has a lot to do with the fact that they want us to see that Lenny feels comforted. Sadly, he kills a pup accidentally, so it becomes a sad setting all over. 
Only Lenny was in the barn, and Lenny sat in the hay beside a packing case under a manger in the end of the barn that had not been filled with hay. Lenny sat in the hay and looked at the little dead puppy that lay in front of him. Lenny looked at it for a long time, and then he put out his huge hand and stroked it, stroked it clear from one end to the other. Now, as we know that, it, that I said it in the summary itself, Lenny breaks Curly's wife's neck accidentally, right? And a lot of this has been foreshadowed from the dead mouse that was in Lenny's pocket, the fact that he that Aunt Clara stopped giving him things because he always kills the animals accidentally. And they ran away from weed because he was touching someone's dress because the dress felt nice and she thought that he was assaulting her. And obviously that's because he's a little too aggressive and it has a lot to do with his mindset and how huge he is as a person. But what we also notice about the setting is that it shows how lonely Lenny is. It shows that Lenny possibly can't live with people. He can't be around people. That no matter how hard he tries, he becomes a danger to those that he is around. So the question is, can George or the people at the ranch live with him? Is there any chance? Is there any solace? Is there any way that it gets better? The next quote we're going to use says, From outside came the clang of horseshoes and the iron stake and a little chorus of cries. Lenny got up and brought the puppy back and laid it in the hay and sat down. He showed the puppy again. You wasn't big enough, he said. They told me and told me you wasn't. I didn't know you'd get killed so easy. Now, that be that's not true because as we know, he no matter the size, he's too rough. And it just seems that it's probably inevitable that he can't function around people unless he's watched over 24-7. Now, that just shows the loneliness that Lenny has to be by himself or something else. Now, another quote that I use, that I will use now is, before Lenny accidentally kills Curly's wife, she goes into a description of where her life should have been. And it's the fact that she wanted to be a star. She wanted to be in Hollywood. You understand? And I will get a little more into this when we talk about characters in the next class. And I talk about Curly's wife as a character. And how she as a woman has bigger dreams than some of the men on the ranch. But for now, I want to kind of take a little snippet of the place. And look at how she kind of does a comparison of Hollywood versus the ranch. And then kind of tie in her character and themes in one. Listen to this. She went on with her story quickly, before she, before she should be interrupted. Another time I met a guy, and he was in pictures, went out to the Riverside Dance Palace with him. He says he was going to put me in the movies, says I was a natural. Soon as he got back to Hollywood, he was going to write to me about it. Right? She looked close at Lenny to see whether she was impressing him. I never got that letter. No, we're going to stop there. Right? Oh. I always thought my old lady stole it. Well, I wasn't going to stay in no place where I couldn't get nowhere or make something of myself and where they stole letters. So, before even going into her personality, I want us to look on the fact that she, she said it simple. Hollywood is a place where someone can make it. This ranch is not. And even though it's in California, we see that the actual ranch itself, the working class, it brings down her status in regards to Hollywood versus a ranch. And she finds that she believes that she should be in a setting with stars because she sees herself as beautiful. And a lot of that has, has been shown with how they look at her. They look at her as a tramp. They look at her as a whore, right? Where if she was somewhere else like Hollywood, she wouldn't be seen as a whore. Her beauty would be seen as something that should be celebrated. Hence, she would be a celebrity, if you get what I'm saying. So we we'll have to kind of look on how that um, builds up. And what we also notice here too is she makes it clear that she doesn't feel like she belongs at that ranch. And that is where the writer kind of shows us dreams and aspirations where the dreams of Curly's wife can't be realized in that ranch no matter what right and one of the main themes here is the american dream and that ranch the setting of that ranch makes the american dream impossible because the only thing that can happen on that ranch 
is hard work, labor, and toil. And that's why everybody's trying to get out. Curly's wife wants to get out. George wants to get out. Candy wants to get out. Crooks doesn't be, be, um, believe he belongs. The ranch becomes almost a type of social prison. The last quote for setting for this chapter now is how the setting changes when it is realized that Curly's wife was dead, right? Outside, the noise of the game stopped. There was a rise of voices in question, a drum of running, of running feet, and the men burst into the barn. Slim and Carson and Young Wit and Curly and Crooks keeping back out of keeping back out of attention range. Right? Pick up that part too. Candy came after them, and last of all came George. George had put on his blue denim coat and buttoned it, and his black hat was pulled on over his eyes. The men raced around last stall. Their eyes found Curly's wife in the gloom. They stopped and stood still and looked. Now, let's look at how the area has broken up, has been broken up. Outside is where it was full of life. The barn was seen as lonely. Then all action stops outside and everybody rushes into the barn to see what is happening. Right? And then they see probably the loneliest character in the book, which is Curly's wife, all by herself, dead. Because even though Lenny was an outcast, Lenny had George. Even though Crooks was an outcast, because he was good at horseshoe, they allowed him to play horseshoe. So there was a space for him that he was allowed. And Candy, even though he was old, they still allowed him in their space. You know what I mean? Curly's wife was not even accepted by Curly. She seemed to be very lonely. Curly seemed to neglect her a lot. You know? And... All of this comes into the bar and we see her, loneliest person there. And then the setting becomes a symbol of this loneliness, a symbol of the dreams dying. And along with Curly's wife dying, as we will talk about in the themes um, class, what also dies is the dream of the house, is a dream of their aspirations that George, Lenny and them have because they know the consequences that can come from what has happened here today and with that we're going to stop because what we notice is the setting itself is building up the mood for what is to come for characters which is our next class and the theme in itself all right so please guys if you haven't finished reading chapter five what are you waiting right lots of classes have happened this is about class number 13 right Rewatch the videos if you have to and keep yourself up to date. Do the quizzes that are on Edmodo. Even though the due dates have passed, I have not locked them. So please do the quizzes. Other than that, stay safe. Big up yourself.